This has gone wrong pretty quickly. In my attempts to pull this out, it's just snapped. All right, work continues on the deck, but I am gonna take another break today from stripping the caulking from this really thick teak to crack on with another job so that we can keep these videos a little bit interesting. And today, well, there's a job I've been meaning to look at for over a year now. Let me show you. That is this puppy here, the steering helm. There is, I don't know, well, I'll be able to show it properly on camera. You just have to take my word for it, but there's there's almost like half an inch of play here, and the helm really wobbles around. I don't think it's meant to, so we're gonna pull this apart. I don't think it's come apart for four decades, so this might be easier said than done. I didn't go too well. This has gone wrong pretty quickly. Check it out. In my attempts to pull this out, it's just snapped clean off. So that, I imagine, is gonna be a real bugger to replace. <sighs> Still gotta get it off. Next tactic, heat gun. This isn't working. I feel like I'm getting in a complete pickle. Time to bring out the heavy hitters. So it's safe to say that we're not having a huge amount of blood getting in from the front. So it's time for a change of strategy and we're gonna do what's called the top-down approach. As in we're gonna come up high and we're gonna work our way and try and just have a little scratch off here. We're gonna find the fixings that hold this in place and try and lift this up and see if that can give us a view into what is going on behind here. The screws are hidden under quite a large amount of paint, so let's see if we can liberate them. This is like the worst scratch card ever. You know, you know the saying, sometimes things have to get worse before they get better. Now seems like one of those times. Amateur excavation has found one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna try, so we're gonna try and sort of dig those out a little bit more. See if we can get on them. See if they come out. One time. Right, those screws don't want to move, so it is time to bring in the heavy hitter. Yeah, literally, the heavy hitter. down. I have to go.
We missed the money shot, but it's basically just a lot of brute force. Thanks for your help. No worries. <laughs> What's the prognosis, Dr. Allen? Probably need to uh, get it on a press, and press it out. Uh, oh, so it goes up? Yeah, of course it yeah. does. Table. Yeah, but that's got to come up as first as well. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, we're back down in a little, in a little dungeony work area. We're gonna try and sort this out. That is annoying. So is that. I don't think it's the end of the world, but let's try and take this apart. I'm going to take this off first. Gearing off first, little keyway goes in there. It's the first of two bearings. And here we have another bearing, this one. That looks absolutely destroyed. So the seal, the back of this has come off, and all of those bearing, ball bearings in there, they're all rusted to hell. And that is, that is the bearing that shot. So that's what's giving us all the movement on the helm. So, all right, let's get that on. I have to share the space with other people, you see. So this bearing is proving somewhat tricky to get off. So we're gonna try using a puller and we're gonna push into the point here and hopefully that'll come off. If not, it, it, it might, might be time for an angle grinder. But let's, let's try and do it without the angle grinder because I feel like I'm likely to nick this otherwise. That keyway is absolutely rusted in place, so there really was only one way for that to come off. Time to give this a clean up. I think next up, we'll give this a clean up. This is the brake. Uh, this is the part on the helm where you, you have that little twisty screwy thing and that pushes into this and stops your, your helm from moving when you want to stop it. Let's uh, leave the bearing, which we'll take a look at. On this bearing here, this one's still in reasonably good condition. And I don't know if you can see, there's, there's a number there. It says R16-2R. It's either an S or a 5, I'm not 100% sure, but we're going to go see, there you go, can you see that? Alright, so we've got a bit of a mission to run now. So we've got a couple of bits, I'm going to zoom out and see if we can sort out. Firstly, uh, there's a bearing shop somewhere around here, Solent Bearings I think it's called. So we're going to run in with the bearings we've got and see if they can find a like for like. But also, more importantly, there's a shop just around the corner and we're going to beg and plead and see if we can get them just to maybe weld that faceplate back together at all. And it's not structural, but obviously we need it together to be able to pin it in place. It's not going to take any heavy loads or anything, so let's see what they can do. Um, I've made a bit of a cock up, okay. I've, I've broken a part that's no longer made. Okay. It's not like structural in as much as like it doesn't take any load or anything like that. And I just wondered if it'd be possible if 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 they could be like welded back on there. Yeah, we could do that. All right, now that was promising. Next up, let's see if we can sort this little puppy out. Aha, uh -huh. I think we found the place. Like 
be another successful mission. So they were 16 pounds each, so. Right. This is uh, the front of the steering helm, and this bit is, a, this is how you apply the brake. So this basically screws in here, and then, I don't know if you can see in there. Let me change the angle. This is the brake. And this, well this is another part of the braking mechanism. So basically, that sits in there. You're meant to be able to screw this in, and this is meant to apply the brake when you don't want to steer the helm anymore. And as you screw this in, this little, this little pusher should start to protrude. But for whatever reason, it does fractionally protrude, but not enough to apply a stopping mechanism to the brake. So this needs to come out further. So I've got myself fixing. Just try and push this out. See how far it goes. There we go, that's more like it. So now you can see, you know, that doesn't fit in there now. So that, that brake is now protruding. That brake is now protruding out where it needs to. So what I'm thinking, but hold on. it's quite stiff though. So it's not really flowing in and out. So that brake will remain on. So I think we might need to remove this clean it up because it looks a bit scratched, a bit corroded, there might be some grit and some rubbish in there but screwing that all the way in doesn't seem to push it out, it's like the thread ends so we'll try and get that out, clean it up and then my thought is, well I say it's my thought, one of the mechanics here said if we take one of the old bearings and smash them up then we can get one of these little ball bearings out and maybe pop that in there and that will extend, that will extend this essentially Now that's all cleaned up. You see on this side, I don't know if the camera's going to focus on it, but basically we've got a flat end and this one's got quite the indentation in it. So what I'm wondering is, say if we put a little ball bearing in it, or even if we flip it around the other way, maybe that will protrude out far enough to act as a brake. But what I'm going to do is just put a tiny little bit of grease. Now this is all cleaned out, just on here. Again, and that's just going to not just lubricate this but <clears throat> that's not just going to lubricate this but hopefully that grease will carry up here in fact I did grease on here too I'm going to turn this around the opposite way place that in there and see let's have a look see if that makes a difference there we are we have brake functionality once more. So, that grease in there has also created like a little bit of uh, an air compression as well, so that hopefully when you unscrew that, that suction will just pull the stopper out. So, if we put the brake in, so before the brake would continue to spin, even once this has been screwed all the way in. Let's have a look and see what that looks like now. Boom. There you go. Cadella now officially has a break for the first time since we owned her. Awesome. Right, it's time for me to clean this out. I'm obviously not the only one working here. Turns out that master craftsmen like to work to a little bit of music, so. Uh,
that that has not come up too shabby okay so that's all beautifully cleaned up and I just wanted to get all the rust off so that I could just take a closer look uh, make sure there weren't any cracks or splits or any sort of obvious signs of damage and to my somewhat layman eyes this looks okay taking all the grease off here and again I wanted to know exactly how this bearing felt and uh, it feels pretty good we've cleaned up all the gearing as well as here we go all the gearing see if we can there we go the gearing all looks good there's no crazy amount of wear and like I say this bearing is absolutely solid so I think that looks good to go back in it's nice to have a result and now we are back this is all refurbished and taped up we're gonna to need to give it a little primer coat for, for painting it and I've got some etch primer to uh, I say aluminium can sometimes be hard to get the paint to stick to so I had it on good authority from Alan the megastar mechanic here and uh, Dave they both said that's a good shout on aluminium so let's give it a go So this was previously caked in grease. So I'm gonna assume that's how it wants to go back in. So pop this out, cover it in grease, put it back, set it all up, and then we should be good to go. I'm actually gonna put some grease underneath here act as an insulator between the aluminium and the stainless steel so the dissimilar metals will corrode and given that you know this has been stood the test of time 40 years it's done all right but let's try and squeeze another 40 out of it okay so the tricky part is just locating where this sits the male and female component aha uh -huh. Aha, I think I've got it in one. Look at that. All 
All right, next up we've got this little plastic sort of spacer shim, which can put a little bit of grease on here too, um, for no other reason than just to stick it to the face. Here. All right, put you on there. A little bit of grease on this housing. And a little bit of grease. So now we're going to put the fixings back into the plate and these are these are the originals they're stainless steel and again they're going through a load of cast aluminium so you have that dissimilar metals so i'm just gonna you could put some teff gel on there that would probably be a good choice but i don't have any so uh, in the absence of having it i'm just going to put a little bit of grease again just to help them come in and out and try and just do a little bit to combat that reaction between the dissimilar metals That feels a million times better. Finally, we don't have a, a wonky helm. All right, well that is another job complete, thank goodness. And uh, I've been letting all these little jobs actually slow me down, I'm cracking on with the deck. The deck does get a little bit monotonous, but we are making progress. And there's another phase now to the deck, which would be quite interesting, which I'm gonna, I think I'll catch you up with that in the deck video. But for now, that's the helm all back together. It's all nice and smooth. It all feels nice and tight as it always should have. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy coming along for another ride. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.